newly released index published in Nigeria exclusively by CISLAC, which is the Transparency International chapter in Nigeria, reveals that Nigeria scored 26 out of 100 points in 2019 Corruption Perception Index, failing back by one point compared to last year. In the country comparison, Nigeria ranks this year 146 out of 180 countries, two places down compared to 2018 results. The Corruption Perception Index aggregates data from a number of different sources that provide perception by business community and country as part of the level of corruption in public sector. While the index does not show real instances of corruption, it is a reliable indication of the perception of Nigerian public and international community about the state of corruption in Nigeria. The index is 100% impartial, objective, globally well respected. The negative results from this year provoke tall cautions. Despite proclaimed war on corruption, why is Nigeria perceived by Nigerians and international communities still as very corrupt? The government of Nigeria claims winning the war on corruption, but is this statement backed by evidence? We are all Nigerians, we know what is going on. As Every year, when results are not favorable to the government, CISLAC and all other critical citizens will be dismissed, branded as unpatriotic, and some activists may even be physically attacked. Instead of analytically discussing why Nigeria does not seem to be winning the war on corruption, the government and her supporters will spend taxpayers' money, resources, and precious time on denying the obvious. Nigeria does not make much progress in the fight against corruption. CISLAC and other civil society are not the enemy of the state. So we just want to also emphasize that we are not enemy of government. Civil society is there to complement the sincere effort of government. But when there are things that we think is not proper, we have the responsibility as responsible patriotic Nigerians to point out to the government to correct those things. The introduction of single treasury account eliminated enormous leakages in most MDS. The launch of anti-corruption strategy has provided for the first time ever a clear national strategy on how to fight corruption. The rate of conviction on anti-corruption charges and the volume of confiscated assets has provided tangible difference, uh, difference to some corrupt officials. Introduction of the Know Your, Consumer, know your Customer Policy in the financial sector has made it much harder to export proceeds of corruption abroad and may have reduced the rate of billions of US dollars leaving Nigeria illegally every year. All usable reforms in Nigeria are limited to those who cannot afford to ignore them. The pre-election period witnessed mind-boggling scandal would stay without consequences. Politicians starching millions of dollars in kickback or having corruption charges <coughs> upon them just need to uh, switch political parties or stay loyal and charges are dropped against them. There's no way you can make progress when you are being selected in the fight against corruption. When somebody has stolen such huge amount of money and then simply because he or she had moved to your political party, then you drop those charges. This will definitely continue to give the impression that we are not serious about fight against corruption and perception will continue to show and indicate that you are not actually fighting corruption. So government must realize that fighting corruption is not talk. It is also about ensuring policy and you know, legal framework are imposed, implemented, and where there's a bridges, there will be clear sanction. And more importantly, preventive measures must be put in place to ensure that you minimize the instances of those things before they even happen.
Despite evidence is brought by the, by the brave media and civil society groups, prominent personalities in politics and business are untouchable by the Nigerian law enforcement and executive. This we see every day in this country. So if you continue to do this, there's no way the Corruption Perception Index would be favorable to you. Backlash against media and civil society damages Nigerians' anti-corruption efforts. Like previous, like previous years, last year I witnessed further growth in the civil society and media involvement and activism in the anti-corruption. A lot more investigative journalists are risking their lives to expose corruption in the procurement, constituency projects, government spending, while civil society groups are collaborating to put pressure on government across federal, local level to make duty bearers accountable, those efforts are helping to put corruption in public consciousness and mobilize civic voices. But the period also witnessed increased attack on civil society and media. A perfect expression of corruption fighting back and government not doing enough to appropriate the partnership opportunities provided by the renewed civic involvement in the anti-corruption. We witness increased threats to civic space, tag, um, targeted attacks, and the area in the area uh, the arrest of journalists and civil society activists, exposing corruption of those in powers, was met with harassment, intimidation. One example was the attack on journalists with the privately owned broadcast. Um, radio television in a doorstep by a group of people on November 9, 2019. In another prominent example, uh, Shaori was dragged out of courtroom while the judges are literally held at gunpoint by the DSS. The whole world watched in a shock as the state apparatus become a major threat to public safety and justice in Nigeria. Institutionalized corruption in political parties and political integrity. Nigerian system of governance and the foundation of democracy are for sale. We do not have political parties. We have platform without ideology and any idea to offer voters. Our politicians are masters of survival, changing political parties as they please. Political party primaries are for sale to the highest bidder in a system of godfathers and criminals who buy themselves the right to loot Nigeria from within the government. National Assembly or other politically exposed positions, Nigerians will not win the fight against corruption when corruption you know, is institutionalized within the political party system. At various arms and level of government, see routine systematic abuse of office which by many government appointees that has been you know elevated to a position of being celebrated and yet government has decided not to even acknowledge the serious negative impact of this on the pillar of its anti-corruption campaign to bear substantive results the point we are making here is that when you have political parties that basically have been commercialized and privatized. So it is only people with the stolen money, with good fathers, with unexplained wealth that they can even afford to buy the form. And even when they buy the form, they have to bribe fatty official to even be allowed to contest. What do you expect? When they come into power, the first thing they will do is to recover those monies. So until we carry a serious political party reform, and where you bring some level of sanity and you also carry a serious reform in the electoral system there's no way you would be able to stop corrupt people from hijacking power for personal use poor understanding of definition of corruption and how to tackle it we think the authority lack consistency and understanding on what corruption actually is corruption strive with incompetency and lack of technical understanding in the sector areas. Take the example of the serious privatization of energy sector or both defense contract. In an environment where senior officials are nominated, promoted, advanced based on ethnic, religious, 
and nepotic criteria, technical understanding of governance, including the fight against corruption, is scarce commodity. So there's no way when political corruption continues to strive, then you say that you are fighting corruption. So in other words, you give from this hand and you, you take from this hand. If you don't tackle political corruption, there's no way you can say that you are fighting corruption. Because corruption is not just about bribery. It's not just about uh, collecting the money or giving the money. But also abuse of office. Use your office to do things that are totally unethical, unconstitutional, immoral. Anti-corruption legal and policy framework is underdeveloped. Despite legal and policy provisions for many aspects of anti-corruption, we still lack crucial law and policies. Take, for example, of assets recovery, which the government takes as a big success. Our management of the confiscated asset is questionable, if not dubious. Government has, created, has, government has not created transparent and accountable mechanism for the management of recovered asset and loot. It does not brief Nigerians on where about the recovered asset and loot. Where is it being used and how? Nigerians are yet to see the results from the use of the recovered asset if they have at all been put to use. We want to see where all those golds, jewelries, houses, plots, cash that were confiscated, you know, by some you know from the, some corrupt Nigerians internally here. Yeah, there's no explanation. Nobody can see those things. Nobody can give you where you can cite those things. If you have transparency in place, there should have been a website where you will see all the, the cover that had been made, successfully made. You know, this is where they are. As I speak to you, nobody has that information for public consumption. So there's no way you will collect from this thief and then another one also would take you know, again, nobody is going to take us serious. The amount of recovered asset locally is even more than the so-called abata loot that we have recovered, you know, from the Swiss. It is a tiny amount of money that has been recovered from the international um, um, uh, uh, community. But the one recovered in Nigeria all the billions that have been recovered, the plots, the houses, everything. Nobody hears anything. So there's no way corruption perception index will favor you when you are doing things in secret, when you are hiding information. Because the only way you can actually unbundle yourself from all this is to make things you know, accessible, transparent, and available to the citizens. But when everything is hidden, even when you write the freedom of information request, they don't honor it. There's no way you can make progress with the fight against corruption, and there's no way, no matter what effort you are doing, if freedom of information is not respected, there's no way you can actually make the necessary you know, um, progress in the fight against corruption. It takes an average of 10 years to confiscate criminally obtained assets Nigeria has no legal and policy framework which will enable accountable confiscated asset management. The Proceed of Crime Act that we have been negotiating for over 10 years has not been signed by a presidency, probably due to resistance of some you know, um, people which do not want any accountable transparent system. While few profit from the chaos, Nigeria continues suffering. Inability to implement recommendations on anti-corruption. It does not matter how we rank or uh, how we rank on anti-corruption. It is obvious that we are not making progress. Nigeria is the world leader in the number of poorest of the poor. Insecurity has become epidemic everywhere in the country. The state of our road, hospital, school is disastrous. One of the reasons is that. We did not implement sound recommendation that will have dealt with corruption in Nigeria. The government has a whistleblower policy, yet the whistleblowers are attacked and sometimes even sent to jail. 
Even governmental data recently launched through the second bribery survey shows that Nigerians did not report corruption because they are afraid of repercussions. Corruption in vital sectors such as oil and gas and defense is endemic. As reported every year, Nigeria cannot make progress against corruption if some key sectors do not see rapid improvement. Corruption in defense and security sector is even openly lost by some government officials. Illegal checkpoints, selective army defense procurement, and corrupt usage of security both fuel insecurity and insurgency. This is very obvious. You don't even need further explanation on what is going on. You saw the, when we have been saying that there is a corruption in the security sector and people have been extorted, you know, even when they are suffering from insurgency and war, the government and its surrogate dismiss us. But God help us. The governor of Baron State say it openly that extortion is going on. And the poor people who are languishing, you know, and suffering from the menace of insurgency, you know, violence, you are now taxing them to pay money before they pass. So God help us that the governor himself told the whole world how extortion and corruption is going on in that. And that is why the insurgency has not been able to be dealt with. Remember, when this government came, they say in six months they will deal with Boko Haram. Today, as I speak to you, Boko Haram has come back in a full post. You cannot travel from Medjugorje to Yobe now. They have taken over. And yet we have spent billions and billions of dollars. So you need to ask yourself, what is the problem? Why is it that, you know, despite huge amount of money in the security sector, we even have new form of insecurity, which we did not even know before. That is kidnapping. They are kidnapping people and openly asking for ransom. And shamelessly, even the security people are kidnapped. In Adamawa, the whole police officer was kidnapped. That is terrible. And yet you say you are winning the fight against you know, insurgency. Today, as I speak to you, our security officers are even in fight between the police and the army because the police have gone through the SAS. They have gone to deal with some terrorists. And from the allegation we are hearing, the army was not happy with the action of the police. So they are fighting as usual. How can you fight corruption in the security sector? One individual are siphoning millions and millions of naira meant for servicing the you know security and then taking away this money and then you say you are fighting corruption. Secondly, how can you tell me that you are fighting corruption when security board which is illegal, not what which is unconstitutional, which is not oversight, uh, oversighted, which is not audited? has even increased, the amount has increased under this sent regime. Now you say you are fighting corruption, how will that be possible? How do you think Nigerians and the international community will take you serious? A money that is meant for development, some individual politicians are cornering this money in the name of security board. They are not accounting it to anybody and it has increased under your leadership. And then you say you're fighting corruption? Something is wrong with understanding. That's why we say there's a poor understanding of the fight against corruption or against what constitutes corruption. If you will allow this, you know, siphoning of public money to happen, then something is wrong. Corruption in the energy sector, education, health, other may not be as evident as by the police or security services but it eats out the social public of Nigerians. Every generation of Nigeria comes less educated, less healthy, and worse prepared than generation before it. We are all victims of it. Those who went to university in the 60s, they are not the same with those ones in the 70s. They are not the same. The one in the 70s, they are not the same with the one in the 80s. The one in the 80s, they are not the one in the, the same with the one in the 90s. 
the one in the 90s, they are not the same with the one that comes under the millennium years. And the was now. So that is why you see people, even if they say offer to employ a graduate, they would rather go and have somebody with two masters. Before, it's, they will tell you you have to have one master. No, masters. Now, you have to have two masters for you to be, for people to be confident that you actually know what you are doing. That's how terrible the educational sector has gone. And yet, every year, there's a budget in the health sector, in the educational sector. Of course, our hospital has become mutually deposit. Doctors are not on duty. They, to get a bed spread, you have to pay bribe. Look, these are things that are tangible. Nobody will even, you don't need any trans, Transparency International to tell you that those things are happening. Getting employment now has been commercialized in this country. You have to pay money to get employment. And this government is hearing, we have been shouting about it. They are not doing anything. To get approved, even in the National Assembly, it has happened in this country. People have to pay bribe for confirmation. This is terrible. There's no way corruption perception index would you know, be in your favor. Or even the business, despite the business you know, um, um, environment, the, what do you call the business? Uh, ease, of ease of doing business. Go and see. Before you are allowed to do business, you will have to see this, this one, this, this, this one, give this one, this. There's no way anybody would rate you better. So we have to be serious. Fight against corruption, we want it to succeed, but we cannot succeed under this circumstances and this fraudulent claim and pretense. This year, we will not repeat any recommendation. The government must, take sure, must, must make sure that their own recommendations are followed. Civil society and well-meaning Nigerians can suggest, but government has to lead the fight against corruption. Nigerians' elites need to reflect on the state of Nigeria and look at the foundation, the uh, foundation where we do not progress. Rule of law need to apply to all, not just those who are powerless. Government sanction attacks on journalists and civil society um, discount. We did not lack recommendation and technical solution on anti-corruption. We lack the authority which could impose the implementation to the benefit of Nigerians. Corruption remains the biggest governance challenge in Nigeria with far-reaching cost on democracy and public support and confidence in democratization in Nigeria. While government anti-corruption efforts in asset recovery are yielding results, the fundamental necessary to ensure rule of law and freedom of expression of activists have not received enough attention. Anti-corruption stands the greatest chance of victory where there is a collective action of citizens against corruption and strong collaboration between state and non-state actors. Where there is no cherry picking in terms of which corruption case uh, to prosecute and one not to pro, uh, prosecute, where there is alignment of purpose and commitment among the arms of government, executive, legislature, and judiciary, and where the anti-corruption campaign is transparent, inclusive, and objective, there must be no room for untouchable, no matter how close to government power or influence. There must be increased transparency and accountability in the management and use of recovered assets. The rule of law must be upheld in the fight against corruption. Non-state actors may be allowed to right to enjoy freedom of expression and speak out without intimidation or harassment. Government can achieve greater improvement in the anti-corruption by forging stronger collaboration and coordination with non-state actors involved in the anti-corruption. We can achieve more working together than what is possible working in silos. Therefore, we call on the President Muhammad Bahari to prioritize and support urgent political reform, including the overhaul of the supervision of political parties. We wish to integrate our call to Mr. President to immediately initiate comprehensive electoral reform to restore the trust of citizens in democracy. Furthermore, judicial corruption must be confronted you know, head on. There is also an urgent need to pursue and press on with security sector reform to stamp out corruption in the country security sector. 
Lastly, economic reform in the extractive sector has to be pursued without further delay or excuses. Above all, we appeal to all Nigerians, especially those in power, not to attack and criticize the results of Corruption Perception Index as released today, but to use this time for a critical reflection on tangible ways to introduce real reforms. Corruption rankings alone did not eliminate poverty or improve security. However, they are indicators on the impact of policies and state of governance. We hope that we can use Corruption Perception Index results and use this moment you know, for a genuine reflection about real tangible improvements necessary to strengthen the fight against corruption.